Well, good Tuesday morning. I want to share with you, I don't know if you realize this, we are starting our 46th day in the study in the Church of Corinth. All right, we've spent a tremendous time on uh, a lot of different things, but you know, uh, uh, what I pray is as, as we're going through this, that you're getting a lot out of it. One thing God has really spoken to me about is do not rush these things and take time uh, in little bites so we can all grow together. So are we ready? We're going to jump right in today now. Uh, got your journals? Got your Bibles? Got your pens? You're all ready to go? Okay. So yesterday we finished a verse with, and, and, and last of all appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. And as we learned, all right, uh, what that meant, we're going to look at the next verses now today. And, and, uh, uh, and, and we're only going to be looking at the next three verses, but there's so much in them that I really want to share. So we look at verse 9, and it says, uh, For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. And so Paul is now looking back at who he was, and that's what he means by abnormally born. All right, as Jesus met him on the road to Damascus because he was really persecuting the church. Now, I'm going to take a little side trip here for a second on this because in 1 Corinthians, we see Paul says that he is the, the, the least of the apostles, all right? Uh, and, as, and, and, and Corinthians was written earlier in his ministry, all righty? And so as he goes on a little longer in his ministry, he refers to himself uh, in Ephesians 3.8. He says, I am the least of the saints. So he goes from the least of the apostles to the least of the saints. Now, for those of you that don't know, a saint isn't something that the church makes you. A saint is something that God makes you. A saint is every believer. So he says, I am from the least of all the apostles down to I am the least of of all believers. And then as we see his writings, as we see the different epistles he's written, all right, he refers to himself toward the end in 1 Timothy 1.15 as the chief of all sinners. See, there's a, a natural progression that happens uh, as we become closer to God. A humility comes out of us. And, and the more we realize how perfect he is, the more we see our imperfections as we grow closer. So, and then we see, I go past the side note now, now we're in verse 10, all right? But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. And so what Paul was realizing as he's, he's speaking in these verses, all right, uh, that, that uh, he is not worthy of God's grace. He is not worthy to work in the kingdom. And for that reason, he probably worked so hard trying to make up for all he did against God's people. But it's only God's grace, all right, that, can, uh, that he can even be called an apostle. And he realizes that. It's only by God's grace that he is blessed to do what he's allowed to do. And so he goes on and he works harder than the other apostles, all right? But he understands it's not him, it's not Paul, but it's the grace of him, Jesus, all right? Jesus working through him and he's humbled by that experience. I don't know how you feel about it, if you're working in the kingdom or not. If you're not, shame on you, you should be. All right, God has called us all. He has plans for us all to work in his kingdom. But I know Donna and I speak about it uh, quite often, how humbled we feel that God uses us. He uses our imperfections for his perfection. All right, and this is what Paul was saying. And then he finishes with verse 11. He says, whether then it is I or they, speaking of the other apostles, this is what we preach and this is what you have believed. So he's referring to the other, other apostles and he's basically saying this. It doesn't matter 
who led you to Christ. That doesn't make any difference. It doesn't matter who led you to salvation, all right? We all preach the same gospel. And it's that message that, that seals your salvation for eternity. And this is what he's trying to say. So tomorrow we're going to look, uh, uh, we're going to kind of shift gears, and he's going to start talking about the resurrection of the believer. And, and uh, there's, they had some weird thoughts back then. But when I say that, we have some weird thoughts nowadays. So we're going to find out all about that. Alrighty. Father God, thank you so much for your word. And Lord, only by your grace, only by your grace do we get to approach your throne. You tell us, Lord, we are saved by grace through faith and not by works so none of us can boast. And we know, Lord, it's only because of your, the price you paid that we have an audience with you, that we have a relationship with you that we have love that will last eternally in a place with you. We thank you so much for being our God. I ask you to bless this day in a special way. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care now.